Hi and welcome to Insights in Business. This is a presentation of the Campbell River Chamber of Commerce and we're here today at the Shaw Studios and our topic for today is looking at workforce development from both a supply and a demand side. Um, we're going to um, listen to what insights our two guests here are today uh, from John Bowman who is the president of North Island College and from NIFS we have joining us Chris Callanan who is the team leader for employer services. Thank you very much for joining us. Maybe before we begin I'll just mention that one of the top two uh, concerns that businesses had when we did our business leader survey was access to a skilled workforce that meets their needs. So let's begin with you Chris and maybe you can just share a bit about NIFS and some of the resources that you're providing. Sure, thank you, Colleen. Um, NIFS has had the contract as the uh, local work BC office here in Campbell River since 1986, and we're considered the uh, workforce development leader here on Northern Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. So with our office here in Campbell River, we have a variety of services, both for the employer and for the uh, job seeker alike. Everything from our uh, job board that is very uh, popular with local job seekers, where they can access job postings, they can see what they look like, how to apply to them, and what the scope of work we're look like for those jobs. Another thing we can do for employers is we actually can um, advertise those postings, uh, whether it's uh, private or, or a more um, vocal ad that's out there. We can do that through a variety of uh, platforms, including uh, Shaw Channel 114. We also have the ability to uh, support those employers by putting on uh, in-house information sessions or employer forms where the employer uh, free of charge can advertise what their organization does, uh, talk about upcoming employment opportunities and maybe credentials that a, a person would need in order to gain entry into that organization. Um, other things we can do for um, the employers and job seekers are both paid and unpaid uh, work placements. So again, great opportunities for individuals uh, trying to connect with work here in Campbell River. That's great, and hopefully throughout this conversation we can have you share a bit more about each of those because that's sure. an amazing resource that's available here in our community. Yeah. And it's probably fair to say that some employers and some job seekers may not even be aware of all the opportunities that you provide to help them in their challenges. That in their is true, challenges. yes. yes. Yeah. So let's just continue and talk a little bit about labor market. Mm -hmm. That's looking at uh, what job seekers are looking for and what job opportunities are, are out there. Could you just share a bit about your most recent report and some of the highlights from that labor market report? Yeah, definitely. Um, what we can see coming from uh, the summer months all the way to the end of September are a strong amount of job postings. So those are what the local employers are advertising on our job board. Okay. Um, and our last report shows just under 3,500 job postings from local employers. And that's from Campbell River all the way to the northern tip of Vancouver Island. So it's quite robust. And Chris, how does that compare to previous years? Is that an increase in... It's a, for this. It's a steady increase, yeah, okay. yeah, it, it really is, and we're up nearly 500 postings over this time last year. Wow, mm -hmm. that's significant, yeah. that's significant. Mm -hmm. And so additional highlights, what are you seeing? Which industries are posting the most jobs? Maybe share a bit about that? Yeah, we can still see uh, strong growth in our resource sector, so that's both the aquaculture and forestry sectors, so they're still popular there. Uh, we still see growth within the tourism and hospitality sectors, mm -hmm. and then finally mm -hmm. our sales and service roles still uh, show continued growth. That's everything from restaurants to retail establishments here in town. And what kind of jobs are they looking for across those sectors? Uh, everything from entry level or laboring roles, which are still very popular here, um, all the way to mid level and sometimes the senior role is advertised. Mm -hmm. So uh, just recently, Marine Harvest has had some high level roles that they were advertising to the public, which again are great opportunities for those interested. Absolutely. And John, just hearing that labor market information, what is North Island College doing to help support and address attracting that uh, skilled workforce to Campbell River and keeping them here? Well, we're doing lots of things, including working closely with uh, NIFs to identify and learn about what the needs are in the region from an employer's perspective and also from a uh, uh, job seeker's perspective. So. I'm happy to share that we're developing new programs and we have a number of exciting new initiatives in forestry and in aquaculture and tourism and hospitality. Um, so it's a really exciting and, and positive time for the college and for the Campbell River uh, region. And we're excited about the part that we're playing in uh, expanding opportunities in training and skilled trades and, and business related programs in the region. So let's just break that down a bit because sure. that is exciting. It yeah. sounds like you're doing a lot. Could you just talk about aquaculture specifically? What's happening that North Island College is taking a real uh, leadership role in? 
Aquaculture is uh, really an important initiative for us. We're working closely with the BC Salmon Farmers Association and the BC, BC Shellfish Growers Association. Okay. We received a major grant from the provincial government, uh, $600,000 in the spring to uh, advance the development of our aquaculture training, working in partnership with industry to develop the curriculum for third and fourth uh, level certificate programs that will create a degree in aquaculture. A degree in aquaculture? Uh, well, well, sorry, I, I misspoke. We're, we're developing a diploma, but it will ladder into a degree in aquaculture mm -hmm. eventually. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. this will be open to uh, new job seekers, people entering the industry, but we're also going to be working with uh, employers to provide that training to their current workers, so it'll be a credentialing mechanism for uh, major employers in what aquaculture. What a great win-win to have that in our own community. So you're looking at both from an employer need, and what did you hear from employers? What was what were some of the challenges that really precipitated this coming this program being developed? We heard about the challenges that uh, they have finding local people who are qualified and ready mm. to uh, enter the workforce. Mm -hmm. uh, stories about recruiting from uh, Nova Scotia, for example, to really? fill jobs here on on the North Island. So. Uh, oh. Uh, the advice and input that the industry provided us and through the associations was instrumental in, in developing the curriculum. It's still a work in progress. We have mm -hmm. more work to do, but uh, uh, those pr programs are coming on stream in the next year or so. And that in itself is a huge step forward for our community to be able to access and keep people in our community that see the opportunity to seek aquaculture as a career path. But what about forestry? Well, we have been uh, providing forestry-related training for a number of years. Uh, we have the Coastal Resource Forestry uh, Technician Program. Okay. It's a four-month certificate program, again, developed in uh, consultation with employers. Mm -hmm. It provides practical, hands-on, entry-level training uh, to people who want to work outside in, in the woods, essentially, and gaining skills in everything from timber cruising to uh, safety and uh, chainsaw work, uh, firefighting. Mm -hmm. A lot of certificates that really enable people to uh, gain work quickly in, in the forest industry. That's exciting. The, um, the opportunity that we heard from Chris about seeing a lot of postings in the forestry sector. How do you see that sector changing, John, in terms of what education opportunities people needed maybe five, ten years ago and what North Island College can offer today? Well, I think increasingly technology is yeah. uh, affecting the employment and so uh, literacy and technology and uh, in, in skilled uh, trades is going to be increasingly important. Equipment mm -hmm. operation is in big mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. And Chris would know this better than I, that there's so many people going to be retiring from the forest industry. Yeah. That's where a lot of the openings are being driven. There's certainly new jobs being created, but also uh, people leaving. Uh, the average age of a forest worker is, is 50 plus. So uh, it's a huge challenge for that industry. For sure. And uh, we need to, we also have a role, I think, in, play, in educating the community that there are good jobs in forestry. It's not a sunset industry. Uh, sometimes it gets a lot of negative publicity, mm -hmm. but uh, it's an important part of our, our economy. And uh, we will continue to support training and enabling people to access jobs in forestry. So, John, when you look at accessing, you said you, were, you developed these programs curriculum in collaboration with employers. Mm -hmm. how, how do you access that information? What types of um, opportunities can employers participate in working with you to develop curriculum? Well, we start by asking them questions about what their needs are, and we certainly use the type of information that Chris was uh, describing that we get through NIFs. But uh, right down to the skills, the, the des design of the curriculum, what certificate experiences are required, for example, uh, uh, driver training, uh, various skills that uh, they need to have. So it's really a comprehensive curriculum development process that we go through, led by our faculty, but involving uh, uh, employer participation in the uh, workshops that we do. Okay, thank you. And Chris, um, mm -hmm. listening to what John has just talked about, about how they're working with aquaculture and working with the forestry industry to make sure that the programs represent what employers need, what are you hearing from job seekers and employers uh, with regards to forestry, aquaculture, um, and the types of uh, training or certification or that maybe bridge to going to North Island College? What can North Island Employment Foundation do to support 
job seekers and employers in those areas? Sure. For the job seeker, uh, anyone interested in going into that sector, uh, if they were a client of ours, would connect with a case manager. And there together, one-on-one, -on -one, that, that job seeker and case manager would build a bit of an action plan uh, geared towards a person maybe getting that post-secondary education to go into that industry. Uh, and that, again, could be anything from the aquaculture or the forestry programs that are offered through North Island College. Quite often, we have our, uh, our job seekers wanting to stay local. They want to stay within Campbell River rather than having to go out and up until now uh, if anyone were interested in aquaculture quite often they'd have to go out of the community in order mm -hmm. to get that training so now we have a great chance to be able to do that here at home. Uh, from employers, we get employers uh, sometimes just asking for a specific school that they want to have that credential from. And now with North Island College about to embark on that, I think we're in a good position to be able to serve those local employers, whether it be Marine Harvest, Greek Seafood, uh, CERMAC. Again, it's going to be very helpful. And we see that for the forestry sector as well. One thing that we did to help with the forestry sector, for example, we actually uh, very recently put on a forestry expo where we gathered many, um, uh, many organizations from the forest sector, uh, Timber Sales, North Island College was there, and there we, uh, we had um, job seekers and the public alike attend that event and just find out what it, ta what it takes for a person to get into forestry and what a typical day in the bush were to look like, for example. And then from there, it gave anyone that was interested a chance to apply to those jobs. That's great, yeah. because as you said, John, you know, a lot of people maybe don't know what the needs are, where the opportunities mm -hmm. are. It's shifted so much. Well, and there's new industries that are growing and expanding on the North Island. For example, mm -hmm. the, the film and TV production mm -hmm. uh, is yes. a really exciting new area for us. And uh, again, we're developing a new program there, which will enable people to uh, gain skills to work in lighting and set design and construction, and even as production assistants for TV and uh, film productions. So how did that come about? What, uh, what drove uh, your need to develop that program? You know, it's another classic yeah. example of uh, the industry, or an association, in this case the, uh, the Film Commission for the North mm -hmm. Island, coming to the college and working with us to say, you know, we, we would attract more productions if we had skilled people locally to be employed in those uh, areas. Right. So it was really a, another case where we were trying to be responsive and, and relevant to our community by responding to a need that was identified by uh, an employer. That's great. And that, that's, like you say, that's such a partnership when you can work that closely. Is that program up and running right now? Yes, it is. Uh, the first intake started in October, and uh, it's being offered both here and in Campbell River, in Campbell River and in uh, Port Alberni. It's exciting. There's lots mm -hmm. of opportunity there. That's another technology growth industry. Yes. I want to come back and talk about succession planning and uh, what employers need to be thinking about in terms of training and uh, building uh, a succession plan within the industry and access to skills. Thank you very much. We look forward to sharing more with you with our two guests, John Bowman from North Island College and Chris Callanan from NIFS in a few moments. Welcome back to Insights in Business, a presentation of the Campbell River Chamber of Commerce. And we're here with our guests, John Bowman from North Island College and Chris Callanan from NIFS. And earlier we've been talking about how important collaboration and partnerships are. Mm. Uh, I'd really be interested to hear um, some examples from you of how you're really working these partnerships in the community. John? Well, there's so many strong partnerships in Campbell River, and, but I think I should talk a little bit about the working relationship between NIC and NIFS. And, and one example that comes to mind recently was in connection with the construction of the new hospitals. Mm. There was a need to uh, train or to hire uh, people who work in, in the uh, uh, construction of wall and ceiling systems. I think the trade is called lather or lather. And uh, we worked with the ITA and NIFS to uh, create a program. what's ITA, John? Industry Training Authority. It's okay. a provincial agency that funds trades training. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had the uh, expertise to hire faculty, of course, and create the program. But we worked with, well, I'll let Chris pick up the story in terms of how it worked with identifying potential candidates to enroll in the training and, oh. and get the experience. And then they, anyway, why don't you? Yeah, yeah, so what we do is normally we would host an information uh, s uh, session where staff from NIC as well as folks from the ITA would come into our office and go over the program and what successful entry into that program looks like. They give uh, industry highlights to what a day in the life would look like for a lather uh, and really give anyone interested a full scope of what work looks like. And from there, anyone that was interested could find out the particular pathway in order to uh, apply to that program and go to the college from there. 
Great partnership with Island Health, NIFs, the college, and uh, Absolutely. employers. Absolutely. Absolutely. So is that fairly typical of what would happen, that an employer would identify a need and then and come and see you? Maybe walk through how an employer would access uh, an opportunity with you, Chris. So if anyone were interested in that, they would connect with their office and speak with myself or Shannon Bakey, um, our, uh, our regional manager for the office, and they would identify the need and, and really um, what kind of project they were after and how they wanted that to roll out to potential job seekers. And from there, if we needed to take care of some of the logistics in terms of connecting with training institutions or other organizations, we would go and make that happen. And before we know it, we have an event in place ready for the uh, public or job seekers to attend. So you really can rapidly respond to yes. a need. And, and John, yes. same thing from your perspective, an employer, how would they approach North Island College if they have a particular need? Uh, any number of ways, certainly directly through our faculty or to the dean responsible for a given program area. Mm -hmm. We often hear about program initiatives through program advisory committees uh, that employers participate in. So uh, there's no single point of contact, but a variety of ways to, to get involved. They could probably even call you. They could and do. Good. That's mm -hmm. good. So we talked a bit, I heard from you about this changing need in terms of workforce. Uh, technology was one of the things. What's changing in terms of the demographics in Campbell River? Maybe start with you, uh, Chris. What's happening? What are you seeing in uh, in Nyefs now? We're, uh, we're starting to see a lot of newcomers come into the community and mm -hmm. come through our doors. So. It's a regular occurrence now for us to see uh, a lot of folks from out of town. So uh, just recently we had a husband and wife uh, move in from the interior and uh, by watching the WorkBC website they learned where our office was and from there they came in and introduced themselves and said they were brand new to town and they're both in need for work. So from there they were able to meet with um, some of our, uh, our case managers and begin the, the path in order, uh, to find employment. That's really, that, that's so important that both need to have yeah. meaningful employment opportunities. What about diversity at North Island College, John? Well, we have a, a variety of a diverse student population at the college. We see everything from, you know, direct entrance from high school, 17, 18 year olds, to people who are coming back to the college to relaunch their careers mm -hmm. after perhaps mm -hmm. uh, being displaced or just wanting to make a change. Sure. Uh, people perhaps moving from the forest industry to healthcare is one example. Uh, we have uh, increasing numbers of international students and uh, it's really a diverse, exciting uh, population that we serve. Very reflective of our communities. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So I want to spend a bit of time talking about um, your sabbatical project because I understand, John, you've had a very interesting summer. Can you share what you were doing? Uh, absolutely, and it, it goes back to this theme around partnerships and collaboration between the college and other organizations. Uh, I was fortunate to be granted uh, a paid leave of absence from my regular duties for three months uh, to work on a project to um, learn more about how we interact and work with organizations across the North Island. So everywhere from Aculet and Tofino on the West Coast to Alert Bay and, uh, wow. and, and Port Hardy and everywhere in between. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed 80 community leaders and organizational partners from NIAFs, from the Chamber, from local government, First Nations, I won't try to list them all. but. Uh, a very diverse group of people who uh, have relationships with the college. I was asking about how we can improve our working relationships, um, what their needs are, what their priorities are, and uh, a tremendous wealth of information came forward. Uh, I've got about 45 things to follow up on, but it was, it was, it was very invigorating and very positive because, uh, you know, in summary, uh, the college is important to all of the communities on the North Island and uh, heard many success stories and it was very gratifying to, to know what a big impact we're having on each of our communities. And uh, so lots to do, but uh, I think of it as job security because there's no shortage of work. Well, and how exciting for the community to be able to share that with you. Uh, what, yeah. were, what were some of the highlights? I know you're doing a town hall, but maybe talk about how you're going to share out what you, what you heard, but what were some of the highlights that you heard, John? Uh, the relationships between the college and the school districts, of course, is very important. Mm -hmm. and, and here in Campbell River, we have a particularly uh, close working relationship with Timberline Secondary School. Right, yeah. We're, in fact, in the midst of a major renovation and expansion of the college campus here in Campbell River on Dogwood. Uh, it's a, about a $14 million investment in new spaces and uh, renovated spaces. We're creating new shops. Uh, we're consolidating our Vigar trades training center to the Dogwood site, so new facilities for heavy duty mechanics and uh, aircraft structures, new space for nursing and uh, 
We're going to create some separation between the college and the high school spaces, but there's going to be a, uh, a full adult learning environment, including a new atrium, a new uh, learning student commons. So it's going to be a really a first class adult campus environment for students here in Campbell River. That's exciting. And do you hear that, uh, John, about the need for that separation between the experience at high school and entering into college? We do. Um, the relationship, the close proximity is desirable, but uh, we want to have a full service kind of adult learning environment separate from uh, you know, grades 9, 10 mm -hmm. students. So mm -hmm. uh, it's important for adult students to feel safe and uh, in an appropriate adult learning environment. So that's part of our focus. Um, but really providing a full service campus uh, that Campbell River deserves and uh, should have. So the, the value of that new facility, um, what was the financial contribution? Uh, it's a jointly funded federal, provincial and college project. Uh, estimated cost is about $14 million. Mm -hmm. So it's a major investment in infrastructure mm -hmm. for the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's going to be a game changer for the college and for Campbell River as a community in terms of the, the quality and uh, volume of post-secondary education we can provide in this community. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. And it's already under construction? It's under construction, construction as we speak, yes. It's, a challenging project because we have to continue to work and teach in the high school and the college simultaneously with expanding and renovating it. So it's going to take a little while longer, but it'll all be finished uh, come summer of 2019. 2019, okay. not, not, not too no, far no, away. Yeah. So we talked earlier about this need for job seekers and employers to access a skilled workforce. Um, what else is happening from uh, NIFs in terms of uh, creating those opportunities to meet the needs. Yeah, sometimes we see uh, a comment from an employer or a range of employers just asking uh, how can we help with uh, soft skill development for those uh, coming into the building or coming into their uh, organizations. And that's one of the things that we help address through uh, our job search uh, workshops, where depending on the workshop topic, we could cover uh, soft skills that were needed. All what the way- What do you define, sorry Chris, what would you define as soft skills? Um, Communication, mannerisms, mm. the way we approach employers, uh, how to dress for uh, for interviews, um, really to uh, I guess to be in a position on how you can sell yourself to a potential employer, mm -hmm. and everything that goes along with that. Because that's important. Those soft skills. Is that what you're hearing, John? Oh, absolutely. And uh, more and more, they're being incorporated into our programs uh, through project-based learning, through team work-related um, curriculum, and also through work experience. Uh, uh, getting students out in the real world of work where they can interact with customers and employers and, and develop those uh, soft skills. So many employers just expect them to be ready to go when, when they arrive. Yeah. How important is it for employers to have continuous um, skill development within their workplace? Well, I think it's crucial, and uh, you know, the expectation of the college should be that we'll provide you know a certain level of basic skills in a in a technical field or uh, or what have you. But continuous learning more and more today is what's expected by and, and mm -hmm. for employers. Mm -hmm. And from your perspective, Chris, what does that continuous learning look like? What what kinds of opportunities could you provide? Maybe expand a bit more in your workshops and well, the grant opportunities. Yeah, I can see similar to John's point, but employers being open to uh, to that continuous learning as well. Um, we're finding that in some of our workshops, um, communication seems to be a big point that we keep focusing on. And what we're finding is after uh, a person were done, even just one workshop or a series of workshops through NIFs, uh, we see the confidence come through. And that is huge when a person uh, goes goes into that office, goes into that store to apply for work, and we're finding that employers are, are very impressed with it. I can recall one instance where a person applied with Thrifty Foods, and by the time they were done our workshops and did their own homework in order to get involved with Thrifty Foods, the, uh, the staff there were very appreciative of, uh, of everything this person brought and was able to make the comment that they found the interview very similar to uh, a piece of Thrifty's literature. It's so. exciting. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how many people don't have those skills to exactly. go and have a yep. successful interview. So I want to come back and talk a little bit about this um, comment that you made, John, I think about how uh, the workforce is retiring. Mm -hmm. And so what looks different now with the demographic that we have? What are some of the concerns that you're hearing about preparing for that big wave of retirement that's happening? 
Well, I, I think the big concern is uh, just the lack of people that we have to mm -hmm. fill all the opportunities and to, for example, take over small businesses uh, when, when business owners retire. And we talked about the forest industry mm -hmm. and the challenges there. So uh, uh, I think educating high school kids about the opportunities mm -hmm. and, and encouraging mm -hmm. them to career plan and, uh, and consider post-secondary. A, a lot of kids don't go directly on to post-secondary education. They take time out to work. and. Uh, Interesting truth, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, I think we see about 60% of kids who graduate in, uh, in uh, June go directly on to post-secondary somewhere, and the majority of those, of course, come to North Island College in the North Island, which is gratifying. But So we have, a work, we have work to do to increase transition rates to post-secondary mm -hmm. so that young people can move into careers and, mm -hmm. and access the many opportunities that are there in the workforce. For sure. I think we also have to work with Aboriginal communities uh, okay. closely, and uh, support their uh, citizens in gaining the basic skills and careers that uh, uh, we want them to participate in as well. So 60%, is that fairly average, John? It in is, terms yeah. Of and it goes up every year, but uh, not every kid who graduates from high school, of course, goes on to college or university directly. And right. uh, so we, we capture a good, a large market share, particularly here in Campbell River, but we want to do even more to grow that number. For sure. And now with these new opportunities, more opportunities to stay at home and, and access the kind of training. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's going to be lots of new opportunities for different types of programs here in Campbell River, which we're really excited about. And that's the training employers want. Yes. Yeah. That's what you're hearing as mm -hmm. well, that yeah. on the ground training. And training at a level that the employers are now wanting to send their own staff to, perhaps. So share with me some of the innovative projects that you're working on right now. Well, there's a f so many. Uh, <laughs> let me just talk about the high school marketing initiative, though, because I, I talked about trying to attract more high school kids into the college environment. Uh, we've been doing some great work to uh, share information with the high schools in the region about the programs and services that we offer right in the on the high school campuses. So mm -hmm. more information to counselors, to teachers, and uh, directly to students about uh, you know what we have to offer. So targeting, for example, here in Campbell River at Timberline Secondary, how they can uh, transition from the high school program to specific college programs that we have in this community and similarly in Port Alberni and uh, so lots of posters, uh, TV monitors in the, in the high schools promoting what the college has to offer and uh, we're already seeing a big impact uh, from that. That's great. Um, what other innovative uh, strategic initiatives? Uh, well I mentioned Aboriginal education and so uh, important. It, it's, yeah. it's crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, we are indigenizing curriculum. Uh, we've been a leader provincially with uh, healthcare related programming, but a number of new initiatives to uh, make uh, healthcare programming, nursing, uh, community mental health worker appropriate to serve the needs of uh, Aboriginal uh, communities. So, very excited about that. Um, International education we've talked about is uh, is booming and uh, is an important uh, growth area for us uh, and uh, internationalizing the curriculum and internationalizing our college campuses uh, so that we live in a global world and uh, we want to educate and support students, Canadian students, in becoming international citizens of, of the world. So, uh, Lots of diversity mm -hmm. and lots of respect for working together as partners and collaborating because yeah. no one organization can address all the needs in the community. Absolutely. So I just want to thank you both for being here today. Some great insights into what's happening in terms of a skilled workforce. And thank you for joining us today. You've been listening to Insights in Business, a presentation of the Campbell River Chamber of Commerce. And our guests today have been John Bowman, President of North Island College, and Chris Callanan, who is the Team Leader for Employer Services. Thank you for joining us.